let's talk for just a moment about tone and sound and locks and keys on vibration. We're going to go back to crystals here for a moment. Um, as you start to unlock some of your history, much of it was locked in vibrations to preserve it more than anything else. Um, many of you saw the time of Atlantis coming to an end and so you put all of the, the records into the crystals and then you put vibrational locks on them. In other words, you put them in a particular vibration um, so that unless you were able to reach a particular frequency, you were unable to access them. Now, sometimes the vibration itself is the lock and key and other times you can create a lock, an energetic lock with a series of tones and sounds just like a combination and what happens is you create a frequency that's binding all right? and in order to get it to stop you've got to know what the key is what frequency do you need to introduce in order to create an interference pattern to get it to stop, to unlock it? So this was used quite often and not only in Atlantis but even in when Earth was first being um, created. When you all were setting up the game for yourselves, you created all kinds of systems of vibrational locks and keys. And one of the locks that you also utilized with tone and sound was that of creating the veil for all of you so that you wouldn't peek over into the multi-dimensional realm too soon. That you had to raise your vibration in order to get there. Alright? So there are all kinds of locks and keys that have been in place and now you're just raising your vibration and finding your way through them. Um, a lot of the ones that were put in place there aren't ones that you've got to have the um, the interference pattern to, all right? They're more like uh, how you do your mazes. You might hit a block, but then you've got to go around it and keep on going through. So you can create this for yourself. You can um, you can start playing around with your crystals. Start um, asking your crystals if you can create a lock and key system with it. All right. So if you've got a piece of clear quartz and see the crystal all right as you're putting tone and sound and intent into it for the locking of the of the crystal um, and it, remember when we said when you activate a crystal it's almost like it blossoms or opens energetically and allows you to put information in when you are uh, it's open you're opening it and then you're putting the information in it to lock it you're telling it what you want it to lock so envision the crystal that it's open and ready to receive your signal to lock it all right and then that just closes it up so see if you can see in your mind's eye what happens when you work with your crystal and ask it or present it with that option and then um, use your imagination let it be your guide to also unlock the crystal all right um, just want to look here you won't have to create a tone or sound that's going to stop and dissolve the lock altogether. Um, you oftentimes, and, and this is a, a basic kind of key, there are different variations of keys that you can put on. Uh, some are just vibrations and then closing it and then putting the vibration in again and opening it. Some you've got to have something that's different um, as opposed to um, when it's different you shatter it. It's like finding that polar opposite. It shatters and dissolves it permanently as opposed to locking it and relocking it so you can lock it and unlock it again. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So just play with the crystal, put the sound in, and then see if you can see with your mind's eye what happens to the crystal, and then try and put it back in and see if it'll open up again. Um, you're going to learn how to use this more and more as you go when you get into the higher realms because you, you utilize it a lot more in order to create and manifest, to lock things off, to create partitions, if you will, um, to create the illusion of things. And this is done with tone and sound and creating these locks. Locks create almost like little walls. 
All right, you can separate it and keep it there, so it stays within a confined area in in that locked area. Um, How why would you? When you get into the higher realms, it's one way for you to play around and, and create, um, to manifest. But you don't necessarily need crystals, do you? No. No. Um, the reason we want to point out some of the crystals, mm. all right, and specifically, is because the information was locked into crystals, all right, uh, at the time of Atlantis, and you're starting to recover some of these crystals, and they need to be unlocked. All right, that's, that's where we're headed here. So you want to sit with a crystal and you can look at the face of the crystal. You can see either inside, you will see um, things that, uh, you'll see a lot of etching on some of the crystals, specifically ones that have little triangles etched into them. You'll see them. Those are record keeper crystals. They've got um, something imprinted on them. So sit with a crystal and listen to it. What tone of sound is that crystal making? What do you think you hear? That's one way of working. The other is to start up at the bottom, start at the bottom and work your way up the scale until you feel that crystal start to vibrate in your hand. When it's vibrating, that's the appropriate sequence. That's the appropriate um, sound that you need to project at it in order to get it to unlock. And when you do that, you can see a projection. Uh, you can unlock the vibration of the information that's stored in there. And you will either see it visually, you'll feel it, or you'll hear it. When you say that they have to be unlocked, is that so one person could open it and it will be good for the whole community? Or is that only for the person who opened and unlocked that crystal? Uh, no, it's pretty much good for everybody because that information is then put into mass consciousness. Okay. As you receive the information, you immediately put it into mass consciousness. Mm -hmm. So it's not just for the benefit of one, it's for the benefit of all. And it, these are what you're going to find more and more in order to open up your history. All right? In order to open up your earth history and your past. It's all in there. And it's all contained in crystals. And the key to unlocking the crystal and getting the information is through tone and sound getting the, the crystal excited, getting the molecules excited, and getting it to open. And then you can pull it out, in a sense. Can we use tone and sound the same way also to unlock our DNA layers? <laughs> yes. Yes. But it's not anything that you've really got to do to unlock your DNA layers. What you work on is you work energetically, is you work in your field, you lock and unlock the DNA through the energetic template, more so than really dealing with the physical DNA. When you unlock the template, you unlock the DNA, or you activate the DNA. It's my impression sometimes that certain music certainly has a different kind of ability to open people or give people a sensation of being in almost multidimensional contact rather than other kinds of music. It's something that interests me a lot, and I, the, the, the music I've been doing recently, uh, I often got the feedback from people that the experience of it seemed uh, similar. And many people experienced that something was, was unlocked, or something like that. That they were shifting, absolutely shifting their vibration instantly when listening to the music that of course makes Yes, um, because there is a sense memory and when you start accessing some of the higher realms the body immediately remembers uh, or you vibrate that part of you in your energetic field that remembers and, it, and many times it feels like home you hear music and it feels like home that celestial music in the celestial world um, in many of the celestial realms is where you feel that you know you, the wave of the hand and you hear uh, the music that happens in the celestial realms quite often in the celestial realms uh, we also uh, would put another label on it saying the angelic realms when you're in the 10th 11th and 12th dimensions so people can have an immediate response to the music, especially when you're talking about something that has such a high frequency to it. 
And there's so much high intention infused in the music itself. Even if you've got someone who's got a lot of resistance, they're still going to get it. They're still going to feel it. And they actually may in some ways feel it more than others because all the stuff gets activated and they feel very uncomfortable. Yes. Can we answer that question? Yes. Where do you find these crystals, or I mean, how do you know if these crystals have these information? <laughs> well, one, they're going to find you. You're going to find the attraction. But you can look at them. Sit down with your crystal, whether you think it has uh, encoded information or not. Ask the crystal what it wants to share with you. What answer do you hear? But you can see, literally see on the outside, the etchings. Some of them have been etched. All right? And, you know, they may come from the most unlikely of sources. It's not that all of them have been found. Even the Native Americans in some of the older traditions, it's not just the Egyptians, it's not just the uh, Atlanteans or the Lemurians, uh, even the Native Americans who um, encountered many of the, the Atlanteans after they scattered, um, continued on with the traditions of working with crystals and, and honoring crystals as, as part of earth and you know earth being a record keeper we're better to put records than in crystals to embed them in the crystal is it important for us to just unlock them or also to put information like is it necessarily up today well you can you don't have to put information or your records of what's going on into a crystal but you can program a crystal to hold a particular vibration or a particular frequency for you or a particular intent so that when you drop in and out of that frequency it's still holding it solid okay. and in a constant rate so you can tone and sound again to make the crystal open up to get it hot to get it um, you know, if you're somebody you can see, you can see the shapes, the geometric patterns start to open and unfold like a flower. And then you can put your intent into it, what you want the crystal to hold. So when you hold that crystal, if you're not vibrating at that rate, it will tell you where to vibrate at in order to hold that intent again. So that's the power of being able to program a crystal. And each one has its own natural ability um, of alignment. And some crystals are better than others. Um, that have a more neutral signal to them to in, embed or encode information into, and that's usually clear quartz crystal. Although amethyst and citrine and um, a few others, uh, lapis was used in Egypt to encode information into um, that can be utilized, as, you know, that can be utilized, and, and um, some are better for just doing other things altogether. All right. What else? So, so how can I use uh, sounds of tones uh, to more integrate the higher sound into my sound? Well, part of that happens is you continue to work on yourself and continue to work on your fears. So you can use the tone and sound to um, to heal your body, to work with your body, to and it's not so much your body that you're healing, it's your emotional issues that vibrate outside of the physical body that you are activating and triggering and clearing. So you can use the tone and sound to heal and to let go of those belief systems, to interrupt the pattern so that you can break the belief. So if you want to reach enlightenment, what you've got to look at are all your fears. Also, the more love that you hold in your body, the more the higher frequencies, um, the more time you spend in that vibration, the more you activate the lower ones if they're there. You activate them so that you can recognize them. And then once you recognize them, you can address them and hopefully let them go. Because anything unlike love um, cannot exist if you're pulling in love, you know, through the laws of entrainment. You've got to mutate, got to transmute into a higher vibration. Make sense? Yes. It's really not a difficult process of clearing. Uh, you just think it's difficult or you've got resistance to it. But the process of ascension is pretty easy. All you have to do is let go of your fears. I mean, it's not complex. That sounds simple enough, doesn't it? <laughs> 
but the process that you go through, the emotional turmoil that you go through is complex, we understand. But the actual process is not difficult. That's, that's it. That's all there is. You've got to let go of the fear. It's not like, you know, you've got to go to point A, go, then point B, and there's a specific path you've got to follow. No, there are, there are lots of ways to get there, but you've just got to let go of fear. So it's some kind of uncovering process. Again, dear? It's it's some un uncovering process. Yes, uncovering where your fears are. <laughs> and the way you do that is to be in the now. We're always back to the now, aren't we? You've got to be in the now. Because everything happens in the now. It doesn't happen in the future because it doesn't exist. It doesn't happen in the past because it's not there. The past is nothing more than an agreed upon set of circumstances on a timeline and that is it. If you change your past or you want to heal, quote unquote, your past, what you want to do, you can envision it as working out differently and when you feel it working out differently in your body and it feels that way to you, you let go of all the judgment of it, you put yourself on another timeline where the agreed upon set of circumstances means you have a different past. How is that? <laughs> you envision basically your childhood being a different childhood, yes? Yeah? Yeah, so if you had an uncomfortable childhood, um, you can either carry that around with you forever, or if you neutralize the charge and you hold no judgment to it, you put yourself on another timeline. Because it, it creates a different template for you than if you are running around with all this pain and anger. Because that creates a different now for you. So it puts you on a different timeline. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's one way to heal multidimensionally. It's not that you've got to go back and change it, but you can feel that it changed. And in essence, because it's all an illusion anyway, it does change. Your now changes because your beliefs about the past have changed. And the past was just an agreed upon set of circumstances and you've got to find the one that, that has those new circumstances. I just realized before when you said uh, one of the things that would be good for us would be to get rid of our fears. <laughs> Uh, that when we use tone and sound for that, it is quite a difference. If I, before I do that, have an intent of expressing a fear, or from the beginning have the intent of transmuting that fear? Um, we recommend that you intend to transmute anything that is not of the highest vibration. Or that you envision holding the highest vibration in anything that is not like that, comes into your awareness. That is actually probably the best way for you to intend to have that. Can you please that? That you are holding the frequency of the highest vibration and that anything that is unlike that come to your awareness. I have a lot of that stuff come to my awareness and it's not happening. <laughs> Well, there, there are belief systems that are in place still that you're not willing to let go of. Mm -hmm. And they can be for a wide variety of reasons, so you have to look at the emotional. You've got to deal with the emotional to see why you created it in the first place. How is it of service to you? When you really look at that and you get it, you see, ah, that served me very well. That's when you neutralize the charge. Um, a lot of times people get stuck because they think they're victimized. And until you shift and see that you are not a victim, people also carry a lot of guilt because they feel that they're a perpetrator. You, you know, you co-create someone, your best friend, up in the higher realm says, I'm going down to earth and I need you to do this for me so that I can have the polar opposite experience or the positive. Will you play the negative? You say, well, I'm not quite sure I want to go there again. And they say, please, I really want to have this experience. And, and they say, all right, for you, I'll do it. And you go down and you attack them. All right? Because they wanted to know what it was like to play a victim. So you carry a lot of guilt for attacking them. That's how you set up the belief system. And you won't forgive yourself. But when you see that you agreed to do that for them, that you co-created the event together, that... You have that aha moment and you let it go. They asked for it. You agreed. So that's not sort of necessary that we become aware of it. Again, dear? That, that we have to become aware of it. 
Do you have to become aware of it? A lot will happen on the subconscious level, but for some of the really deep stuff, yes, you will have a conscious awareness. Um, and sometimes you require that of yourself. You said, I need to get this consciously. This isn't one that I want to slide by subconsciously. But not everything. No, some things you can clear at the subconscious level that you just drop. You don't have to know all the where's and why's and how's, no. Because you'll, a lot of things you will just work through uh, as you work through relationships and you won't be aware that, that you've come through it. Uh, in other words, you may create friends who are very demanding. All right, because you've got boundary issues. So you don't have to know consciously that that's an issue, but what you might create for yourself is a situation where you have a friend who's very demanding and finally you say, you know what, that doesn't really work for me. I can't do that for you, I'm sorry. You don't have to know that that was the issue that you were working on, but you just work through it because you set up that boundary. It served you up until that point where you said, all right, I'm done with it. It's time for a new pattern. And so you let it go. You integrate it. So in effect, we give on the conscious level the things we do a lot of reasons that aren't necessarily how you would actually uh, how you would accurately describe what's really going on on on, on, the, on the subconscious level. A lot of the things that we clear, we we just give another name in our daily lives, and yet deep issues could be cleared. Yeah, you know, you clear a lot more than you're, or you're really aware of as you go, uh, just walking through your life. Yes, and, and you're not as damaged as you will think you are. <laughs> you know, you, especially as you start to awaken and you say, oh, I have this issue or I have this block or I've got to clear this or look at what I just created. You know, and then it, it sends you off and, oh, my, how, uh, how am I ever going to get this done? I, I'm such a mess. I've got so much to clear. I'm never going to go through ascension. But... You know, it's just an illusion and you choose new vibrational choices and you get there as you walk through life. Nothing really has to be fixed. It's nothing broken. Remember, it's vibrational choice. That was the previous vibrational choice and in the next breath you get to choose a different one. Nothing has to be healed. Healing implies for all of you that there is a negative attached, that something's broken. And we really encourage you to think of it as I've got a vibration that I'm holding on to and I just need to shift it. Can you feel the difference in your bodies when we say that? I have to heal and I have to shift. They feel like night and day, don't they? Because of the emotion that you assign to those words. You have a neutral attachment to shift where healing means death. You associate it with death because if you don't heal you die you go through the death cycle and also shift you think of as uh, something that is outside of the death cycle by the way as you all go through this ascension process those of you interested in going and we see that for most of you here in the room uh, that you don't die you don't go through the death process you go through the ascension process and in the higher realms, we don't die. We simply step out of the form. We dissolve the form that we're in and reproject ourselves somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So we don't die. Mm -hmm. We don't leave behind any body. We don't leave behind a form. We dissolve it. We manifested it and then we dissolve it. The discordant sound. Intent, yes. Yes. Um, it's not, and it's not even so much um, a discordant sound as um, a removal of energy so that it starts to just eventually fade because there's nothing there to propel it any longer. All right? So what else do you want to know about? Um. Earlier we talked about um, 2012, and um, you said this is maybe like the time where something can, where consciously the people and the planet will go to the other dimension. 
is it necessary that all people on planet Earth are at this level? Or what happens with the rest of their life? There were beings who incarnated. And remember, you create a blueprint before you incarnate about what you think you want to experience for this go-round. Mm -hmm. And some people knew full well that they weren't interested in going to the fourth dimension. It just wasn't an arena that they wanted to play in. Mm -hmm. So they decided that they would go through the death cycle and that they would incarnate again to a planet that had a similar paradigm to that of Earth. So there will be many people who will not go forward with the ascension process. But again, we're going to go back to these different versions of the planet which are pulling apart. So those who are going along for the death cycle, those are going to go along on one version of the timeline and they will create opportunities through mass disease or through natural disasters. You've had lots of natural disasters lately that have taken people's lives because they need an out and that's how they chose to go uh, and they chose and how you by the way how you choose to go out can be very important is, uh, because when you have people who are doing it in such a way uh, where the numbers are so high it gets your attention that somehow earth is out of balance and so they're giving you the gift of reminding you in their method of departure that you need to learn to be more in balance with mother earth so some beings will go along for that um, for that timeline. They'll go along with that version, and then others who want to go through the ascension process are already starting to vibrate at a higher rate. So they're on that different version of Earth. But no, not everyone's going. They're not interested. Not everybody wants to go. Would, would we like actually really feel or see the separation, or is it something that goes? parallel that you don't even realize? Um, you can sense it um, because when you're in the higher realms you can look down and see into the lower. You can see what's going on, you can see a lot of chaos, you can see a lot of people in distress but you look around at your own life and it's very peaceful. Mm -hmm. And that's where you're creating a different vibrational experience for yourself and you're vibrating in a very different space than everybody else around you. All right? So you can look down and, and uh, you will be able to look down for quite a while until the separation occurs. The and final the separation, separation occurs, then we, we experience more like we are not having certain kinds of pro problems. Anymore. Yes, you're not having the problems. You're not finding people who are in so much distress and so much drama. Everything seems just a bit calmer, and it's not something that you're going to notice to say, "Oh, what happened to all those people?" <laughs> it's just very normal as you're walking down and stepping forward through your life. Just like right now, you don't really think, oh, I'm going through the ascension process. You think, oh, I'm just going through my life and this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. It's not until we tell you or that you really think about it that, oh, this is part of the ascension process. It's just life. You know, uh, as we said the other day, if you, you know, we told you several years ago that, you know, six months worth of experience was equivalent to, uh, a couple decades of life, uh, of life. All right, and this last six-month period that you had was several hundred years worth of growth. The next six months, several thousand. It's exponential, uh, and it keeps getting uh, more and more life and experience um, compressed. But you don't experience it any differently. You just say, well, life feels, a, the pace is faster. You know, we've got more going on. You don't really think about it. Oh, time's compressing. You don't process it that way. True that um, as we shift for ourselves, we're also shifting for all our karmic lineage, all, the, all our <laughs> other parts that we've lived in. And with yes, because in order for you to go through the ascension process, what you've got to do is integrate all aspects of self, okay. which mean your past lives mm -hmm. and also your ancestral line. That's Anything that you're holding on in your energetic field that started in the ancestral line, you can clear it out. And what happens holographically is as you clear it out here, yeah. you project it off to your uh, ancestral line because they are not past, they are living their life right now. So you, you deposit that information on how you integrated that issue into their energetic field. Now they can choose to open that software, so to speak, and run that program to, to learn how to do it themselves. 
or if it's it's going to interfere with what they really wanted to work on and experience then they're just going to save it they're not going to run the program they're not going to look to how, see how it's done but what you are looking to do is to clear all of that and to integrate all of that into your um, body all right can you please explain once more whether there's a difference between frequency and vibration and up to which dimension this is going because if I um, listen to Tobias, I think it makes sense that there is a time now where we don't have so much of vibration, but there's an expansion. So there must be some kind of a difference in there. Mm, we would not put it exactly that way. Remember, a lot of times things have to be explained to you in ways that you can grasp. So that was the way that was offered to you. Um, it is expansion because you are opening up to all possibilities not just a singular one but in order to do that you've got to raise the vibration to get yourself beyond the limitation or that veil or that lock that was created to create separation um, so what will happen is that you're going to move into the fourth dimension and that's a transitory zone and then you're going to eventually move into the fifth how long it's going to take we're not really certain and remember time doesn't matter anyway some of you will go before others and others you will linger and it, you'll get there when you get there. It's a nanosecond. Source energy doesn't have vibration. It's all things. It's, it's all vibrations. Uh, more than vibration, there must be something. Um, we can't really go there with you because you have no concept that can encompass it. We may have a memory of it. Uh, not that you're going to be able to process right now as we're speaking with you you carry it in you you carry the original sound in you it's in your core it's in the core of your soul but to tell you what source is and how source was originally manifested um, it's extremely difficult extremely difficult for us to even begin to give you an inkling in any language it would be it would honestly a bit pointless it might put the mind at ease but it wouldn't even begin to give you an inkling of what that really was we're sorry we can't give you a better answer Why do you say was? <laughs> is well yes in your linear terms it was because it was past but is um, if this is the first time where the planet and the people moved to the fourth dimension by in the same time what does that mean to for you nothing <laughs> because we see all probabilities we see all timelines so you know on some timelines it doesn't succeed on others it does so we're just interacting with the one that does okay. we're, we're playing with you and, and learning so you just you've chosen the timeline where you know this is probably this is going to work out yes well, so <laughs> there was a hesitation there. <laughs> well, we are working with some of the other timelines where it's not going so well. Mm -hmm. You know, we're playing around there. Do they still have free will so that you know, or do you know? We don't know exactly how this will play out. None of us know exactly how this will play out because it has never been done before. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, why can't you tell us? You know, if you're in the future, or you can see all things. Why can't you tell us? Because each of you in this now are making choices so which timeline which version do we tell you or give you because you can make um, what may be a low probability selection all right you decide you really want to go for it and you're gonna jump off the cliff and you know the probability of doing that was one percent but you decided I want to I want to really give it a shot I'm gonna go for it and you could choose that and that would be the last one that we would see coming so if we were to tell you well this is going to play out this way um, we'd be completely wrong and you made this vibrational choice which puts you on a completely different timeline one that was completely obscure because the highest probability led to maybe a hundred different timelines that were possible as opposed to this one which was you know down the block and around the corner it was quite a ways away now as opposed to right here. Do we still jump timelines from the beyond the third dimension? Um, we wouldn't say jump. Like we do here. You review. 
Because here what happens is you move without any sort of consciousness, awareness of it. In the higher realms, you look down timelines, yes, and you see which one do I want to experience. And then you step into it. You step into the vibration. You match the vibration and you project yourself there. So it's a little bit different because uh, you, you do kind of jump here because it, uh, you don't know where you're going consciously. You're just going to the vibration energetically. It sounds a little like having raw film of, of uh, recordings for a film. And then you look down all the, the raw footage that you have and then you sort of compose your movie the way you want it. Yes. Yes, but the difference is that you, there's no emotional experience. When you look down the timeline, it seems a bit hollow or a bit empty, and that's why we say it's like fast-forwarding through a movie. You, you don't get the emotion of it. And then when you actually step down, that's when you get to, um, when you focus your energy into that timeline or into that existence, that you get to have that real vibration and that real sensation and the real experience. Can I ask you for a question about what you were talking before about the, the, the sound, how it affects us? I have a very, uh, I'm very sensitive to sound. It becomes that I sometimes cannot listen to certain music, have to turn it off, have to leave the room. Sometimes I'm in stores, get crazy. Yes. So now, does that mean, uh, as we were talking to, sometimes you need a certain frequency in order, and this is what annoys you, or does it mean that that's yes. just the frequency that is not matching yours? So I'm not quite sure, should I sit there and listen to it anyway, or should I? Look and see, yes, look and see why, what it is, what gets triggered, because um, otherwise you're going to have unconditional love, in a sense, for all frequencies. It's not going to bother you, you'll hear it, but it, you're not going to be charged by it. And for example, when I, when I hear opera, and you know, the idea is about you know, somebody kills somebody else, it, 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 it's physically for me, it's, you know, somebody kills somebody else, you know, it, 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 it is, I, I, feel, I feel what's going on in this music, and if I don't want to feel it, I have to, you know, turn it off or remove myself from it. Which you can do, and then when you're out of that space, look and see what got triggered for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll be really honest, uh, a lot of it's past life for you. Mm -hmm. So you haven't dealt with the past life vibration yet. So when you clear to integrate it, it's not going to bother you to hear opera. It may not be something that you want to sit and enjoy, but if you hear it, it's not going to send you running out of the room. See the difference? Yeah, it, it annoys me because I, 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 you know, I don't like drama. Yes. So that's, and that's drama. You're still judging drama. Yes. <laughs> so you need to look at where you had drama and you held the judgment. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's not going to bother you. But utilize it. Use it, see, to help you to clear. How, how would we clear this? Well, you can start looking. And you can allow your subconscious to tell you. And the way you do that is my most negative thought about drama or my most negative thought about murder or, you know, whatever's getting triggered. Um, and then fill in the blank. And either write it out or speak it out loud because it needs to come out of the body. Um, writing it gets it out of the physical body or speaking it with sound. You're first going to say, I don't know, because it's a block. <laughs> and you'll probably hear this three or four times, I don't know. Finally, it's going to pop up. You know, you don't like drama. Perhaps when you were three years old, you heard your parents fighting. And, it, and you held on to that. And perhaps it, you know, it served you at the time um, because... Uh, it allowed you to forge a stronger bond with your brother or sister. All right? And now you can look at it and say, all right, well, I no longer need that, so I can let go of my attachment to it. And usually when you figure out why you've created it, almost immediately you feel this aha moment. You say, ah. And you, can, you feel your whole body start to relax as you let it go, as you release it. Seeing how something is of service or why you created it in the first place neutralizes the charge. So that's one tool you can use. Um, if you're utilizing tone and sound and creating it and generate it, it's, it may vibrate and trigger that emotional aha moment. Or you may remember spontaneously um, it will activate that memory of that event. 
that happened in another lifetime where you went on a rampage and killed an entire village. All right? And remember, when you see that you co-created that with all the villagers, they ask you to do that at the highest levels, and you said, yes, I'll honor you and do that. You let go of the guilt that you've been hanging on to. See how that works? This is a big concept. There are a lot of modalities that you can work with in order to do healing. There are lots and lots of different ones that work with your belief systems. But it always comes down to your belief systems and your filters. What filters are you holding that are uh, charging something and creating judgments? Otherwise, everything's a neutral. Everything's a neutral. In the higher realms, you know, we have duality, but our charges are uh, minimal compared to yours. Because the lower you get in density, the more extreme your duality is and the more extreme the charges are. So for us in the higher realms, it's, you know, white, black and white are 1 to 10. And then for us in the higher realms, it's the difference between 4 and 5. You know, there's not a lot between. So that's also what makes this a very special dimension and makes it a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> you all keep coming back. Uh, you, you all keep liking it. You, 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 you say that the only time that you guys really come to experience through the third dimension and the third is when you channel. Yes. Because the only other way that we can perceive reality is through our ninth dimensional filter. When we channel, we, we merge our energies. We merge with uh, the channel's energy. And that's when we get to glimpse the filters and perceive through the filters reality. So we get a, a better sense of the emotional experience that you all go through. So you're taking a vacation while we live here from the <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we just come to visit. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> But do you all understand how this operates, how this works with your belief systems and how you clear them? Mm -hmm. You just have to understand, that's all you have to understand is why you, why you created it. Because you created all of it, without exception. Yeah, but you know, it seems I cleared this up about a thousand times. <laughs> how come we can do it? You, you may clear a level or you may clear a slight variation on the theme but you haven't cleared it out, you haven't completely forgiven yourself. So you may have done parts, you may, if it's something that's really deep and really old, it may be too much for you to feel like you can clear it all at once. You may have that belief that healing takes time, that's ingrained in mass consciousness. Healing doesn't take time. You recreate your reality with every breath. So you can create a different reality in the next breath, but your belief system says uh, that you can't. So it doesn't change very much in the next breath, your reality. But, um, and, and as far as past lives go, you don't have to know about the past lives because you recreate that frequency in the now. As you recreate it, that same vibration, um, if it's in a past life, as you activate it now, it begins to vibrate, oscillate, and then any other uh, lifetime that holds that very same vibration is going to vibrate at the same time, just like a room full of tuning forks. You, know, you hit one C, all the other Cs vibrate. Same thing with your issues with your past life. So you don't have to know about them, but you may feel it as you activate it in the now, and all of a sudden you feel this overwhelm of emotion. You think, you know, this isn't logical. Why am I so impassioned about this issue? It's not really a big deal, but I feel really upset about it. It's because you've activated either something in a past life or your ancestral line. It's somewhere else in your energetic field. That's why it feels out of balance. So as soon as you deal with it in the now, and what you're experiencing here in your life is you see why you created the experience here. You clear it out everywhere else. All right? So, so let's just do it. It comes more and more. Yes. We're just, we are, we are hanging on this thing. How? Do it now! 
Yes, that's what we always say to you, but you don't have a very nice response back often, James. <laughs> yes. But, but, but think, not think about it, do it, because it's really here. Well, if you Why think... Why are we... Sorry. <laughs> oh, go on. Finish. Yeah. So, why we are coming here to know, to, to, to hear again about it, what ways we are, we, and there are thousands of possi possibilities, I'm so nervous now. Just, 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 just do it, because the sound is here. Yes. And if you're thinking about it, thinking is a mental process, and you've got to engage your emotions if you want to clear. That's why thinking about it doesn't always get the job done. Because remember we said thinking, thought, creates form. But it's your emotional states that vibrate it all into being. It's like uh, you know, stepping on the accelerator in the car. It's what gets the car moving. So you can think, but you don't move very far. Because there's no emotion behind it. So you've got to always engage your emotional fields. It's all about emotions. Speaking of which, maybe we could, uh, when we end up today, we could maybe end up not doing something. Uh, or something together, maybe. Yeah. Well, I, 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 one other question uh, that has nothing to do with sound. I would like to know if there are people who uh, hear voices and we label them as uh, schizophrenic, um, is this like what? It, are these voices that um, maybe lower frequencies? Um, schizophrenia is a bit different. Uh, a lot of times people who are schizophrenic have multiple beings inhabiting the body. Mm -hmm. Literally they're sharing the vehicle and so they move back and forth and they share uh, who comes through. You know, schizophrenia and multi multiple personality disorder are pretty much the same. Uh, same, same cause. They uh, label them slightly differently but uh, same thing. Mm -hmm. Then you've got others who are hearing other beings. Mm -hmm. And because of their belief systems and everything that they've been programmed to think, it shatters them. It shatters um, uh, trying to think about the West way of phrasing this. It, it really shatters their heart. Because here they are, they're connecting with divine source energy or higher frequencies. Mm -hmm. And um, if they've got all of these belief systems many times through religion, it, they have such negative thoughts about themselves that it, it breaks them in a sense. It really, um, it really does uh, a lot to them. So they have a hard time functioning when, when you have such negative thoughts about yourself. Mm -hmm. Everything then in the physical world is just a projection of that. Everyone thinks you're crazy. Mm -hmm. You're out of your mind. And that just gets perpetuated and that's the mm -hmm. blueprint of it. Can you um, heal these people or help these people? Um, you know, again, you're not responsible for fixing or helping anyone. In the, you can support and hold a high vibration, but they've got to want to step through it. Um, we'll say that many of these people don't necessarily uh, go through the life and come through integrated. Usually when you go to that kind of extreme, you're then going to continue on for several lifetimes of different um, scenarios for yourself in order to really clear a lot of these issues because there's so many of them. You've got to create a lot of filters in order to generate that kind of um, fracturing. And you're probably not going to heal all of it in, in one particular lifetime. Uh, it's possible, but not probable. Right. So we've got maybe another 10 minutes before we're going to stop because we want to do some toning. Uh, so, any last questions? I think that we have done amazing stuff here these last few days. And I was just wondering, first of all, you said that we are in the process of opening a vortex here in Munich. I don't think that any of us have been consciously aware of it, but participated in it. Okay. And the other thing is that I think it is such a leading edge stuff that we're doing here and I wonder on another level who are we really? Was there a common agreement to come together and who is really in the room as it relates to tone and sound? That's okay. Well the room is very full. Yeah. 
<laughs> so it's not just those that you are seeing sitting next to you. There's a whole uh, posse of people. Uh, each of you brought your people with you, um, your entourage. They didn't pay. <laughs> That's all right. They're doing enough work. So, uh, you know, they're earning it in trade. Um, yes. Tone and sound and vibration is, is very, very important and you are opening a vortex, so you've already opened it. But we really like you to stabilize it and um, we would request that this next section where you tone, that that is your intent. Okay. To hold light in Munich, to, uh, to anchor it, but also so that it can expand, that each and every one of you is a spark of that light and you take it with you wherever you go and that you remember that and that that is what you intend uh, as you meditate. Uh, as we've said uh, earlier, there's a lot of healing that needs to take place in this area and this is really a huge step forward in doing that. Many have been trying to do it on their own. Um, and have made great strides and great progress, but there is a lot that is locked into the land from many wars that have been fought uh, for, for century upon century. You know, uh, mass illness, you know, mass, uh, mass plagues and viruses that uh, beings chose as an exit strategy because it was so dark and heavy and they just couldn't get it right so they said let's go back and do it again in another body in another way so that grief uh, and a, a lot of it is it's not so much the beings that die but those who are left behind uh, a lot of grief for being the ones to survive you know if you're talking about the plague uh, being the ones to survive and having to rebuild in many ways there were some very positive aspects of it but uh, it created a lot of ingenuity it created a lot of self-reliance it created a lot of um, a lot of very positive things out of it in the end but you you find that there was a lot of a lot of grief for those who felt abandoned uh, and felt guilty and that needs to be healed and then you know that's just uh, echoed again uh, in the last century in the in the wars that was fought here so again survivors guilt grief abandonment anger judgment subjugation you know it's all here and it's just a little slice of, of what exists across the planet but it's concentrated in different areas you know, and this is one of those areas that it was concentrated. So you're all just bringing a little more light and the tone and sound is going to help to keep it open. Remember, um, what you create and how you create it is going to create a lock. It will create a vibrational lock which will help keep it here and keep it open. You don't have to know. We're not going to tell you do this, do that, do the other. We're going to let you go. You all, you all have access to the information. You're going to find it anyway. Um, and allow you to, to create it and anchor it. All right. Anything else before we wrap it up, dears? Thank you. You're very welcome. <clears throat> so um, we're going to go ahead and leave this last bit for you all to spend some time in, and you know take a good 10 to 15 minutes to do this. Have fun. Uh, don't get lost in your head, uh, I'm a bit off key or I'm off pitch. Uh, you'll find your way back. Um, allow yourself to express yourself uh, and, and look inside. Look with your mind's eye and see what is happening to the energy. Can you see the energy moving? What color is it? How does it feel? What's it doing? What shapes is it creating? Um, and just something to be aware of as you go here. But more than anything, have fun. Play, enjoy it. It's not a heavy duty that you all have to take on. Oh no, now we have to anchor light. All right, we've got to get serious. <laughs> we certainly hope not. So have fun. It's all about lightening up anyway. You know, if you, you get serious, then you're lowering a vibration. So have fun.
You know, it, 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 there's, there's no wrong way to do this, so have fun and just enjoy it and set the intention and let the intention go from there, all right? So we're around, dears. Feel free to call on us at any time. You don't need an intermediary. You don't need Wendy to channel for you. All you have to do is ask for assistance and then uh, listen. Trust in what you get. And so until then, we'll be watching and waiting and sending many well wishes. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's our pleasure. And now we're going to sit back and enjoy your symphony. <laughs>